Hello everybody. I hope you're having a good day today. I hope the weather's cooperating where you are. This is the day the Lord has made. If you woke up today, God's given you another opportunity to do something for Him. So uh, consider these thoughts and uh, here's something we need to consider. Our lesson today is called Counting the Cost. And usually this is dealing with discipleship, but our overall um, life is what we're talking about. See, anything that is of value is going to cost something. I mean, it will be money or time or some sort of effort on our part. Like an education will take time and money and a lot of effort. A marriage will be successful with the same ingredients along with love, devotion, and understanding. And operating a successful business requires the same ingredients or the same amount of effort on our part. And so, <clears throat> most people understand this, and they willingly apply these things to whatever they choose to do. But we want to consider what salvation in Christianity will cost us in simple terms, and we will encourage you to make the right choice. See, becoming a Christian may cost us something in our human relationships. And yes, we know this has happened. Uh, those in the church realize it has happened often. And Jesus must come first and be most important, more important than even our family and closest relationships. And that's what Jesus was talking about when he talked about our discipleship in uh, uh, Luke 14. And, and so obedience to the gospel can cause a strain on any relationship unless it's a, with another Christian. See, the, the, the elements of such relationship have changed. And that's why. See, while one may be desiring to serve God and go to heaven, a loved one may not choose to do so. And if you want your loved one saved, you may have to put a lot of effort to bring them to Christ. And we know that many people are not interested in spiritual matters. And they may choose a different path and may leave. So, yes, it, it has happened. And some people have been shunned by their entire families by obeying the gospel and, and in some cultures have been killed for leaving their former belief system. And so, yeah, there, there's a lot of strain to consider when you do that and you've got to make an effort that, yes, I'm going to do it and I'm going to stick with it. See, it could cost us financially to become a Christian. You know, that, that's right. See, there's many ways to make money and it seems like most lucrative professions are the most sinful ones as well. At least uh, if you're looking for quick money. Now, yeah, there, there's some high paying jobs. There's lawyers and doctors and other professionals, uh, but they spend a lot of time in, in college and uh, schools to, to learn these things, and then they have to put in the, the groundwork. And so it's not an easy life. Uh, you might think it's easy to just sit there and see all these people, but the thing is, they have to know a lot, and they have to know where to find things. And, and uh, uh, take care of things. So, uh, many people are not willing to become paupers for the cause of Christ. See, a lot of people, they enjoy their uh, luxury and their excesses. Christians are supposed to be giving people, and that does not limit their giving to the contribution plate passed around on Sundays. See, the Bible tells us anytime we see a need, we should help with whatever ability or resources or money we have. And a lot of people are just too selfish to do that, to look to the plight of others. A lot of people are so concerned about themselves, they really don't pay attention to others around them. And they don't think they can profit or prosper by giving money to somebody unless they have their cell phone with them and take a picture of them giving money to a homeless person or something. All right, so give as we've been prospered, not only to the work of the church and the collection plate, but like I say, if we see a need and if we can leave or help that person, we're kind of like commanded to do so, as long as we have the ability. We may not always have the ability and we may not always have the amount that we need to share with somebody, but if we have it, we should do it. All right, so we should be concerned about the work of the local church and support the local church, whether they need to pay the preacher or uh, pay the light bills or uh, provide uh, spiritual material for us to study and learn from. 
And so all these things can help us get to heaven. Now, it may cost us something as Christians to stand firm for the truth. And here's another thing. A lot of people around this world wear the name Christian, but they don't care about the truth. And that's right. In, in most denominations, they do not. Even though they claim to, they really don't. When it comes down to it, when you show them, here's what the Bible says, and they're going to argue with you uh, about what the Bible says because they have their own way of doing things. And so... There have been times when the truth was preached and the preacher lost their life. You know, in Acts chapter 6 and 7, Stephen's preaching of the gospel. I mean, he preached the truth and he, he laid it on the line and told those people what they needed to hear. They were so upset, they, they, they took him out and stoned him. And, uh, of course, Paul, by his preaching the truth, I mean, he made a lot of enemies. And, of course, ultimately, Jesus. He spoke the truth uh, all the time. He never told a lie. And yeah, people hated him for it because he was pointing out the flaws and making them look bad in front of the people. And so this happens. The early church suffered persecution at the hands of those who had been given the word of God. I mean, we're talking about the Jews. They had been given the word of God. They've had it, had it for like 15, 1600 years. And they should have known by reading the word of God the, the, the things of the Messiah. And yet, they, they had crafted in their own minds what the Messiah should be, and Jesus certainly didn't fill that, that concept that they had in their minds. And so they treated him as a fake. And, of course, they saw to his death. And so today it's not much different. The Apostle Paul asked the Galatians, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Well, look, look, look at it this way. There's a lot of places that, uh, a lot of churches that basically have become small in number. And chances are that preacher is telling the truth. You can go find the, the churches that have large numbers. And while they may speak some truth, they may not speak all the truth. Because they don't want to hurt people's feelings. And they don't want to chase people away. So, um, I mean, that's just something to consider. And uh, there, there's a few preachers that do preach the truth, even to large crowds. So that's not, not really uh, the norm, but that's the way it is. Probably some of the best preachers and the strongest preachers are preachers in small churches. Um, so, and I heard that many years ago. Someone said, who's the best preacher? Well, it's probably some unknown person out in Montana preaching for a small group. But, wait, well, I don't know. Anyway, that sounds logical to me. When I've looked around and seen lots of different churches, I, I can pretty much uh, figure that's pro probably it. But many people hate it when a preacher points out their sins. And they don't like it. They don't like the preacher stepping on their toes. They don't like the preacher getting into their mind and, and touching their heart. And they don't have to be a preacher to tell someone that they are wrong in something. I mean, we should be doing that with our brethren. I mean, we, we look at them and, you know what? Christians don't really do those sort of things. And guess what? They're going to despise you for saying so. I mean, rarely will somebody say, well, thank you for pointing that out for me and I'll, I'll try and do better. I mean, you don't hear that, but I mean, you're, you're just a wicked, mean-spirited person is what you might hear. And so they, they despise us for telling them the truth. Just like Paul said, he becomes your enemy. And so one thing that following Christ is going to cost us, and this is probably the basis of all the problems, is our own selfish will. I mean, that, that gets us into trouble more than anything else. I mean, what we want to do. And following Christ doesn't seem that way. We want to sleep in on Sunday morning, and we're supposed to go to church. So that Christ is getting in the way there. And so... But that's what we're going to do, and if the preacher's up there telling us that what we did last night is not acceptable to God, then we're going to despise that. And so, what we're supposed to do, give up our selfish will. See, we're told we're to become new creatures with new desires and new goals. In Ephesians 2, uh, 1 through 6, and Colossians 3, 8 through 14, uh, co comes with this. Uh, 
you know, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. And, of course, we know in the death, burial, and resurrection of baptism, we're raised to walk in newness of life, Romans 6, 4. <coughs> and so we, we learn these things. We, we learn that we are not as important as we think we are and that we should treat others as more important than ourselves. You know, Philippians 2, 3 and 4, and Romans uh, 12, verse 3 through 4. And so, yeah, we're supposed to treat others as more important than ourselves. I mean, that's, that's the second greatest commandment right there uh, that we need to consider. Now, one might look at all the vices that is offered here in this world and think that they have to miss out on all the fun. Well, the reality is that the moment's pleasure actually have consequences that are often hard to bear. So, see, to party in excess usually ends up in hangovers and throwing up and feeling bad all day, not to mention realizing some of the stupid things you did and who you might have hurt or killed in your drunken stupor. I mean, people do some dumb things when they, they start think they're having fun. <coughs> yeah, I used to remember in school, everybody thought, yeah, we had a fun time Friday night. Spent all day Saturday and Sunday throwing up, but it was fun Friday night. Yeah, right. <coughs> was it worth it? See, one might think that using foul and vulgar language makes you popular. But see, that only makes you popular in the group that you choose that kind of language. And so, and these people are not godly individuals either. I mean, using that kind of language... Uh, you can pretty well be sure they don't care about God except using his name in vain. Okay, in all, to wrap this up, the cost of discipleship is very high, but extremely worth it. You know, Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 4.17, For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. So what we have to gain is just going to be worth everything. Getting to heaven will be worth all the effort and the amount of effort we put into pleasing God and living the life of a Christian. So that, that's, that's what it's all about, getting us to heaven. But more importantly, obeying God, doing what God wants us to do. And so that, that's what it's all about, doing what God wants us to do. And then, yes, we'll get the reward that he will offer to us, that he has promised and we know God's promises are true. So concentrate on serving God and living the way God wants you to live, and it will be worth it. There, there's no doubt about it. It will be worth it. So that's our lesson for today. Consider these thoughts, and Lord willing, we'll be back again tomorrow with another lesson.